Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief in Houston, Texas. And we have been seeing patients the whole time here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief because we are essential healthcare providers in the state of Texas and nationally. Uh, so we have continued to treat patients uh, safely, sanitizing all of our equipment and our pens and our clipboards and everything. But we're not doing videos on those patients during this time because we were asked not to. Um, so anyway, I want to do this video set behind my computer showing you what I do on research about really cool things that chiropractic does. And one of the things that I wanted to express to you today, and the title of this video is going to be, the real reason that chiropractic adjustments work on people is because of what the research shows that we are affecting neuroplasticity. And you might say, well, what is neuroplasticity? The brain is constantly evolving and adapting to our environment. So if you go out and you practice something like martial arts or football or baseball or anything, volleyball, you are creating neurological loops afferently, which you've heard me talk about numerous times in my adjustments. The mechanoreceptors of each and every joint in the body fires off an afferent proprioceptive neurological impulse into the spinal cord, up into the brain, is processed by the cerebellum and then is sent back into the body efferently to the various organs, muscles, tissues, and cells of the body, and including the, especially the joints. And the brain is relearning and adapting to that particular process. So when we adjust someone's spine, we are firing off the mechanoreceptors that are located in every single capsular ligament around the facet joints of the spine it fires off the afferent neurological proprioceptive input into the spinal cord up into the brain the brain processes that and begins the process of neuroplasty neuroplasticity which is how we continue to adapt so when patients adapt to getting adjusted three-dimensionally on the xyz axes like i do and it works with all chiropractic adjustments, not just mine, but I think mine has a distinct advantage because I am adjusting all the joints of the body, including all the spine joints from the cervical spine all the way down to the lumbar spine and pelvis. But I'm also adjusting shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, ankles, fingers, toes, ankles, everything. So we're firing off even more mechanoreceptors around those synovial joints that send afferent neurological information into the central nervous system, meaning the spinal cord and the brain. So how chiropractic is affecting such a huge neurological change in people and decreasing their pain and dysfunction is because of this phenomenon called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is totally adaptive. And the more you do something, the greater effect the neuroplasticity and the training has. So the brain then changes its neural pathways to adapt to the newer information that is being processed by the brain from the peripheral, if you will, from the spine and the other joints of them mechanoreceptors being fired off going into the central nervous system. So I wanna show you, this is what I do. Renee and I get up about three to 4 a.m. every morning and I go in and I start doing research. Now, this is one of the things that I've done here in the past couple of weeks. And I've taken a bunch of online uh, continuing education, postgraduate education hours during this time from Palmer College of Chiropractic and from this chiropractor down in Auckland, New Zealand, Dr. Heidi Havick. And she is a neurophysiologist, scientist. She's also a PhD and a DC. And she has published some phenomenal work on neuroplasticity that is published in the scientific literature. Now, when most people do research, they're on Google, and here's what they, they put in. Now, you see all these articles that show up on the mainframe of Google, but here's where I go. You see, this says scholarly, art, scholarly articles for recent research on neuroplasticity. 
Well, you hit that, guess what? I'm over in Google Scholar now. This is where the real sophisticated scientific research and information is published on Google Scholar. And I'm gonna go right down here. Look at this, the role of spinal manipulation in modulating neuroplasticity and sensory motor integration. This was published not that long ago, uh, back in 2016, I believe. Yeah, Faculty of Health Sciences, University of Toronto Institute of Technology and Center for Chiropractic Research in New Zealand, College of Chiropractic, Auckland, New Zealand. That's where Dr. Havik is from. That's who uh, she did this research project and she is published in here. And you can see there's very sophisticated information on here about chiropractic. See, when the science met subluxation, and this is Dr. Heidi Havik down in Auckland, New Zealand, she has published research that shows up in the NIH. I'll go back to this screen over here. Here is the effects of spinal manipulation on central nervous system right here. And looky there, there is Heidi Havik. This is the NIH website, which is where the federal government and the most sophisticated scientific research projects gets published on the NIH uh, website in the NIH directory. The objective of this study were to investigate changes in pain perception and neural activity during tonic pain due to altered sensory input from spine following chiropractic spinal adjustments, also called manipulations in a lot of studies. There was only 15 people in this study. However, what they found out, if you roll all the way down here to conclusions, and see, there's a ton of technical information in here. They measured these people with EEGs and uh, other neuroelectrodiagnostic devices, dermatos, uh, dermatomal, somatosensory evoked potentials, uh, dermatomal evoked potentials, and... Oh, here we go. Okay. It's conclusion. This study showed a habituation to pain response following the sham intervention, which is sham adjusting. I mean, it weren't, they weren't doing any real chiropractic adjustments, so it showed the real difference between a authentic chiropractic adjustment, sometimes called manipulation, and a sham treatment, which is somewhere like you just barely touch somebody or fake an adjustment, if you will. It's really hard because if you put pressure in there and you stimulate the mechanoreceptors, that doesn't become a sham anymore because you're actually stimulating the mechanoreceptors. So the brain then does actually take that information and process that. But the conclusion is changes to spinal function with chiropractic spinal adjustments appears to affect in the way in which the central nervous system responds to pain stimuli. So what does this say? And you've heard me say this on all of my adjusting videos is that when we bombard the brain with afferent proprioceptive neurological impulses it changes the pain gate in the brain down through the spinal cord out to the periphery of the body so chiropractic adjustments change people's pain perception by this phenomena of neuroplasticity and is published in sophisticated scientific research projects by Dr. Havik and other. My mentor was Dr. Dan Murphy uh, out in Auburn, California. He's a professor at Life West Chiropractic College out there. He and I have been friends and I've followed him since the early 2000s. Uh, even before that, really, 1986 was the first time I went to his. But there's all kinds of articles on here about neuroplasticity and sign, here's one right here, neuroscientists explored the effect of chiropractic adjustments. There she is again, Dr. Havik in the, out of Auckland, New Zealand, Director of Research, New Zealand Co College of Chiropractic. And she is a Palmer graduate, by the way. But this is her speaking at a conference out in California called The Wave, that's the Life West uh, seminar. And she is giving information on the results of her research, she sees a neuroscientist, a, she's a physiologist, a neurophysiologist, as well, PhD, as well as a chiropractor. 
and she has published some really this this is by the Canadian Chiropractic Association that published this on her let's see there was another one in here I found from chiropractic biophysics where's that one at I got three different four different screens open with this that's Google Scholar this is where I recommend you go for really scholarly reading is Google uh, Scholar because it gives you the most sophisticated scientific research on the planet let's see here where is that there we go nope that's not it Here we go. Improving neuroplasticity through chiropractic adjustments. This was published by Deed Harrison of uh, Chiropractic Biophysics, which is one of the techniques that I use with my Johnson technique in three-dimensional analysis and three-dimensional adjusting on the XYZ axes. But you see he talks sophisticated uh, neuroplastic, neuroplasticity with chiropractic adjustments changing again the brain, which is the central nervous system. So when we deliver a chiropractic adjustment, it fires off mechanical receptors in the peripheral, uh, not peripheral, in the uh, joint capsular ligaments, which surround each and every one of the joints. So it fires off an afferent proprioceptive neurological impulse into through the spinal cord up into the brain afferently and then is processed by the brain all the way into the hippocampus and the amygdala. And then it regurgitates back down through the central nervous system, through the spinal cord, out to the periphery of the body, efferently to the various organs, muscles, tissues, and cells of the body, which helps us to maintain homeostasis. The way the body continues to maintain homeostasis is through this process of neuroplasticity. Now, the conclusion under down here, the future of chiropractic treatment as more studies come to light and this does need to be researched more but i'm gonna tell you right now it's not easy getting research done because i have worked on it for the last two years trying to get research done on my technique and it costs a ton of money and you have to be connected out the wazoo to get it done so i'm still working on that see as studies come to light researchers will be better able to understand the significance of certain adjustments on the spine and how they correlate to brain function Though much is known about what the spine-brain relationship is, and that's important, more data needs to be collected, which I agree with. And as this new information becomes available, you know, it will get published through scientific journals. Um, what is neuroplasticity? This is a good definition, so I'm just going to use uh, chiropractic biophysics, Dr. Deed Harrison out in uh, Idaho. The headline definition of neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to cognitively function staying on top of voluntary and involuntary tasks reading the words on this page and understanding them are an example of neuroplasticity at work see i'm creating new neural pathways in my brain just by reading this and hopefully i'm creating some new neural pathways in your brain because i have tried my entire time on youtube to educate the planet on the benefits of chiropractic care. And even though I'm not adjusting a patient in here today, I've already adjusted all the patients today, and they are benefiting from the neuroplastic changes that I have made to their bodies by adjusting the joints of their spine and their extremities. But getting back to this, which are charged and feeding the brain, nerve bundles. No, that's the wrong one here. Let me get back. Okay, here we go. Neuroplasticity. Inversely, negative neuroplasticity is the brain's inability to function properly. Memory loss, brain fog, uh, mental exhaustion are symptoms of neuroplasticity degeneration. Now, this is normally where we start seeing patients. They are in neuroplasticity degeneration. They have brain fog. They can't think as clearly as they used to. Uh, they're not as sharp. They're not as vital. Their, their energy is low. They have a hard time uh, functioning in their daily lives because their brains aren't functioning at their maximum level of efficiency through neuroplasticity. So I'm going to get off that website and go back over here. 
There was another really good one here. This is my, uh, one of my first associates that I ever hired up in Austin, Texas, Dr. Michelle Gerard at Chiropractic Arts Center in Austin. She got it and she recalibrates the brain with chiropractic. And you see here that what she's talking about is the same thing that I'm talking about. You're affecting the neuroproprioceptive bombardment into the central nervous system. That information is processed by the brain, sent back down through the spinal cord, out the corresponding nerves to the corresponding parts of the body. And uh, subluxations cause two kinds of stress in the brain, physical stresses and chemical stresses. That's very true. Uh, gets into the real technical stuff about dopamine and hypothalamus and hypothalamus and um, different mechanisms of that. But, and serotonin levels, those are all cortisol, which is a stress hormone. Um, so we see a lot of people that are under a great deal of stress. They have high levels of cortisol. But, uh, so we get out of that. And there's another one that showed up on here that I wanted to show you. There's one out of Berlin. Same thing, neuroplasticity model of the chiropractic care, Berlin. It talks about exactly the same stuff that when we adjust a joint, we fire off mechanoreceptors located in the capsular ligament that fire into the spinal cord, up into the brain, into the hippocampus and the amygdala and the medulla and the cerebellum. The cerebellum has 80% of all that brain neurology that then feeds that information back out to the body to control the body's movement and coordination. That cerebellum is responsible for balance, coordination, um, and kinesthetic movement, as well as uh, direct brain body reflexes. So, Cerebellum is very important. You hear me talking about the cerebellum all the time. That is the brain. That's the hind brain. It's located back here in the occipital lobe. And that's the 80% of all of our bodily functions and movement. Posture is all posture, balance, movement, all that's controlled by the cerebellum. And then again, see, they reference Reality Check, which is Dr. Heidi Havoc's foundation down in Auckland, New Zealand. Now, here's the NIH. Again, that's the study that we looked at a little while ago. That's the National Institutes of Health. That's where the most significant study there. It's Heidi Havoc again. And, you know, you guys can go look this stuff up on your own. You can see I put neuroplasticity is the reason chiropractic adjustments work. And then my title of this video is According to Recent Scientific Literature and Research, which is exactly what I've been talking to you about. There was one I wanted to show you. Okay, research beyond a doubt. Adjusting the subluxated spine, and wait till you see this, changes brain function. That is huge. And guess who did this research? Dr. Heidi Havoc down in Auckland, New Zealand, at Auckland or New Zealand Chiropractic College. She is world renowned for this research. And my hat's off to her and other researchers like Dr. Robert Vining up at Palmer College of Chiropractic and Palmer College of Chiropractic, which is the largest spine research facility in the world. It's also the first and largest chiropractic college in the world, which is where I went to school. It's where Dr. Heidi Havoc went to school. And most of the best chiropractors in the world come from Palmer College of Chiropractic because they teach us the science art and philosophy of chiropractic care and its true meaning and that means uh what is the data that is published on the benefits of chiropractic care to the human species through chiropractic adjustments and identification of uh, locked up motor units we call subluxations and here again, she uses the terminology, which I love, the subluxated spine changes brain function. She don't say can change it. Beyond research, beyond a doubt, adjusting the subluxated spine can change brain function. That's not equivocal. That is unequivocal. That means it is 
unquestioned. It is proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now, you hear my voice inflecting a lot because I get really excited when I see this kind of stuff. And I've been doing this kind of research the entire 39 years of my career. And I am dedicated to providing the absolute best chiropractic care I can provide to every single patient who comes in here. We've got patients here now from all over the United States and even overseas that have been there this week with severe spine problems. And I love seeing the severe spine problems because those are challenging, but they also, we see the most life-changing results in those kinds of patients too. Patients that have severe lumbosacral radiculopathy, leg pain, numbness and tingling down their legs and their feet, uh, atrophy even of the muscles because the nerves have been pinched for so long. Um, and it's not the old concept of, of what a lot of the old chiropractors were teaching was, oh, this bone's out of place, crushing the nerve, causing a pinched nerve. That's not really accurate. The newest scientific literature and research proves beyond a shadow of the doubt that chiropractic adjustments that we deliver to the vertebral subluxation complex causes a neurophysiological change in the brain and the periphery, and that is known as neuroplasticity. Uh, listen, Renee's barking at me. It's time to get out of here. So, uh, I'm going to cut this short now, but I just wanted to share with you some educational things that you guys should be considering when you're looking for a chiropractor to treat you. And, you know, we, we treat patients from all over the world here in Houston, as well as Houstonians. And uh, I practice every single day the principles that are taught in chiropractic college at Palmer College of Chiropractic that is published in scientific research. And we treat our patients as if they were family. And we will you to go to advancedhoustonchiropractor.com and make an appointment request and Renee will get back to you within 48 hours. I just wanted to share this with you today because this is something I'm passionate about. This is what I do from about 3 to 6 a.m. every single morning. I'm on the computer doing research. I'm looking at scientific articles. And guess where I go? I go to Google Scholar. There you go. Look at all these articles on that. Neuroplasticity, cortical neuroplasticity. That's the brain, cortex. That's Dynamic Chiropractic, um, British Medical Journal, Journal Canadian Chiropractic. These are all in Google Scholar, so these are very sophisticated articles, a lot of NIH stuff in here, government stuff. Um, chiropractic here, basis for chiropractic perspective indications, uh, Journal of Electromyelography, which is uh, electrical diagnostics. But Google Scholar is where you find the most sophisticated scientific research projects and articles on any subject. And if you type in the right words in your Google search, it will direct you to scholarly articles on Google Scholar. So this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, and we want to help you with your spine problems and your brain. So, you know, we've always talked about people getting smarter from chiropractic adjustments. Well, guess what? It's proven now. You actually do get changes in the brain due to chiropractic adjustments through the phenomena of neuroplasticity. We'll see y'all soon.